In the following tutorial, we're going to take a look at installing a server locally on the computer. Now, this is a testing server called server to go which is what we're going to be using. But this is one of the many WAMPs which are out there. WAMP stands for Windows, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And this basically is a server that allows you to run exactly what you would be running on um, a real web-based server but to be able to run it on a local computer. Now there are lots of different pieces of software out there that um, allow you to do this. Easy PHP have used and it's pretty good. Um, never used Lighty to go but Light CMS is always a light one. It's kind of nice. Here's a portable version. Here's NetServer. Um, server to go of course is here. Let's see some other ones that are pretty popular are XAMP and then also WAMP. So here is the XAMP file um, or place that you can go get it. Um, if you go down to XAMP for Windows you can download it and this has all these different features in it. So one of the nice things about XAMP is that it's available for OS X, Solaris, Windows, and even Linux. So lots of different ones there. Here's another one which is a uh, WAMP server and this has uh, runs all these different items as well Apache and PHP and MySQL. Um, and it's kind of nice because you've got control panels and you get control panels with XAMP as well. Now what we're going to be using is server to go and the reason that I like server to go is because it has a little bit less um, that you have to deal with about the configuration and whatever else that some of these have about you can see all the quick admins and and, and um, control panels I guess that you get with this. This doesn't really have a control panel but we do have to set it up correctly. So we're the other thing that I like about this actually is that it is kind of small. If I go to downloads here are the different versions and you'll see an EXC that is 12 megs and that includes just um, the PHP and SQLite so not MySQL but it's pretty small. You can see they get um, larger for sure. But anyway, I'm going to download basically what I need, which is really just this Apache, the PHP, SQLite, and MySQL, and I can download the exe file here. And I've already downloaded that for us to install, and here it is. So I'm going to go ahead and install this, and I just need to choose where I'm going to install it to. So I'll go ahead and, and install it right here to my documents. That's totally fine. So it's sir, it's in extracting all the files now. And if I right click on this file and find out how large it is, it's 198 megs. And that's pretty large. But let's see what happens if I go and look at an XAMP installation and see if that's a lot bigger. Properties. 380 megs for the XAMP versus or 408 um, megs versus a couple hundred megs. So you can see that it is substantially less in size. So that's a benefit. Now here's the way it's set up. Here is the exe file that we would open in order to um, get this running. And then we've got our htdocs folder which has all of our files in it. Now one of the things that I routinely do is remove the index.php file or go ahead and give it a different name server to go so I know that that is the original index file and you'll see where that plays into things here in a minute. And the next thing that we need to look at is the configuration file. So this configuration file is going to be important because we need to um, set up some things for for server to go to work properly. One of the things that I'm going to do is make sure that I have my keep running after browser close set to 1 that way it won't shut down the browser. The other thing I want to do is show the tray icon, or it won't shut down the server, sorry. I want to show the tray icon so that it will appear down here when I start this. The other thing that I might want to do is I'm going to go ahead and say start local. Now start local, um, if you're running it off of CD-ROM, you can't do that. You have to have zero. But I'm going to do uh, start local for sure. Going down here, we've got our host name and an IP is just fine right now. Um, you can do a local IP if you want but at the moment this is the, the typical local IP. Um, the next thing here is a port 
and if we do keep it at port 4001 it's got a little bit more security if we're afraid of people actually accessing our server but I just put it at port 80 that way we can use the term localhost and it will work just fine um, let's see root the, everything stays the same here uh, let's see the other thing I want to make sure Oh, browser we can change it to anything else if we want um, if we change it to the default right over here you can see default what that does is whatever our default bra browser is it'll open right now it's going to open up in Internet Explorer and that's fine for what the purpose is that I'm using down here we've got our database and we are going to use MySQL um, what I typically do is I don't um, create a mirror doesn't really matter it, as far as I know but I don't do that and it seems to work well um, delete the database files you definitely want this on zero because if it's on one it will delete the database when it's done so that's not a good idea now some of the other things that we can do here are we can add other files to work um, or we can make other other applications open um, you can see startup will start up different applications and we can shut down other applications as well it's kinda cool there's a lot of neat configuration things that we can do but you want to go ahead and save that file and then start up server to go now the way that I always check to make sure that the server is created correctly is I do a simple test and that is create a database and then shut down and then reopen it up so here's index one server to go so that's our index server to go.php and that is the original index file now the reason I, I've taken off the name index and have changed it is so that when I go to the root of this um, server it will actually show me all the files that way it's easier for me to look at all the files that I have there and, and browse if I need to but it is less secure if you're concerned about that so anyway I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna go to my PHP my admin and the username that we want to put in is root with no password that's the typical password or uh, username and password for a local server like this anyway I'm gonna create a new database called test so it has created that database I can go home just make sure the name is there and now I'm gonna shut everything down so I'll shut down my browser and I'll right click and close server to go now you can't see that it's actually shutting down because it's actually on my right hand monitor instead of the left hand monitor here but anyway now I'm gonna open it back up you'll see it's starting server to go and if I go back to the database so we use root we should still see the server or the database called test and if we do we know that this thing is set up correctly so that when we close the um, browser or when we close the server it won't delete our databases and that's a very important thing for when you're testing uh, websites so in the next part we're going to actually install a new website and I really didn't mean to close that so it's not a big deal we can always bring it back up anytime we are um, out of our browser and the server is currently running we can actually just use localhost so it's just local HTTP colon slash slash localhost and it will get us access to it now if we want to use the 127 dot all that kind of stuff we can as well 127 dot 0 dot 0 dot 1 so that's exactly the same thing as localhost and that's why we took off that um, port 4001 and changed it to 80 so let's go on to the next tutorial where we're going to install website baker